This is the third in a series of videos looking at frame elements, formulating them as a new element type. In this video, we will focus on how to take the frame element that was developed in its own 1D coordinate system and translate it or rotate it in order to be able to use it in two-dimensional space. We'll start out with a quick review of what has been developed for the frame element so far in the prior two videos. So first off, here's a picture of the degrees of freedom in this element. There are a total of six degrees of freedom that the frame element tracks. Axial displacements, transverse displacements, and slope changes at both of its two nodes. Because we've introduced slope, it means that our displacement field vector now consists of three terms, even though it's just 2D space. We've got translation in the X, translation in the Y, and slope change. The shape functions that we developed for the frame matrix have the shape functions for bar element, 1 minus X over L and X over L, and then also the four shape functions that were developed for the Euler-Bernoulli beam element. That's the N1Y, N2Y, and N1 phi and N2 phi formulas shown here. In addition, we developed the partial derivative matrix operator for the frame element. It has three terms, d by dx, corresponding to the strain that's produced by a overall axial displacement, and then a minus y d2 dx squared, which is the, the axial strain that's produced by bending uh, transverse displacement, and then lastly, um, a zero term because the slope is not directly contributing to the strain in the axial direction. Then we have the B matrix that was derived. B, the B matrix is simply the product of the partial derivative matrix operator and the N matrix. We get that expression. And when we evaluate each of the shown shape functions um, in all the integrals, we get this expression for B. So let's revisit transformations. We looked at this for a bar element initially in order to turn it into a truss element. So we had a displacement vector at a single point D, and we have two different coordinate systems that we can describe that vector within. We have the XY coordinate system, which is our global, and we have the X prime Y prime, which is our local coordinate system. Previously, we developed a relationship between the coefficients I'm sorry, the components of the D vector in the local um, primed coordinate system to the global unprimed coordinate system. And that's as shown here where C represents the cosine of the angle theta. Theta is the angle measured from the global to the local coordinate system. From and to is important there because if we get a negative sign for theta, we need to keep that in mind. So that basic expression can be... Um, expand it out so that I can write the degrees of freedom for my frame element. Remember, I have six degrees of freedom here. Um, I want to transform from global to local. I'm going to have six degrees of freedom in each coordinate system. So my T matrix is going to be a six by six. So here's what it ends up looking like for my T matrix. Now, where did this come from? Well, it's pretty straightforward. The two by two, two matrix shown up at the top is simply reproduced for node 1 and node 2. So it takes d1x and d1y and converts it into d1x prime and d1y prime. Uh, similarly at node 2. And then the ones shown on the diagonal represent the fact that for slope there is no transformation that needs to make needs to happen. The slope change is the same regardless of what coordinate system that you are looking at it in. So that gives my T matrix. I can use that not only to transform degrees of freedom, but also to transform forces. So my local for, my force vector in global coordinates pre-multiplied by the T matrix is going to give me my force vector in global coordinate. I'm sorry, local coordinates. Um, in addition, we've seen previously that we can use the transformation matrix to convert a local stiffness matrix to a global stiffness matrix. We will do all of these um, in the rest of this video. First, let's take a quick look at the frame element stiffness matrix. Previously, we developed this stiffness matrix for the frame. Remember, this is in local coordinates, though. So now we need to pre-multiply it by T transpose and post-multiply it by T. 
And when we do that, we end up with this matrix. I'm not going to show you the multiplication. You're going to have to trust me on this one. So this matrix now we can use for any frame, frame element in 2D space, and it will give us the uh, stiffness matrix without having to go through the matrix multiplication. Let's talk about how we calculate the nodal force vector for distributed loads. It's actually the same basic formulation that was used for bar elements, and it's the one that was initially developed using the potential energy formulation. So what we, take, what we do is we take all distributed loads, um, or all loads rather, and break them into three pieces. We have body force type loads, where FB represents a force vector um, that it depends on position and it is in units of force per volume. Then we have surface forces, uh, tractions, pressures and the like. Um, FS represents a force vector that varies depending on position and it represents or it's in units of force per unit area. And then lastly we have point loads. Now the point loads are obviously not distributed forces so I'm not going to talk about those here but the first two terms we can discuss. So first off, what we're talking about for a single element, when we find a distributed load vector, it's just going to consist of the forces that could be acting on, at those nodes. So F1x, F1y, M1, F2x, F2y, and M2. The internal force vectors the ones inside the integral refer to the primary directions or primary types of forces. So I can have an axial force that's a body force, a transverse force that's a body force, and a moment that is a body force, technically a body load. Um, and then you get force per unit volume again for each of those, or rather for the two forces you have moment per unit volume for MB. Secondly, uh, inside of the surface force term, you've got the surface forces that act in the x direction, act in the y direction, and then the surface moments. Again, these are units of load divided by area. So since n is defined on a moment or, or inside each element, we want the fb and the fs to be defined in terms of the local coordinate system, not the global. So in other words, this is the x prime and y prime, not the global x and y that we're dealing with when we find distributed loads. The last quick thing that I want to talk about in this video are how we calculate stresses in a frame. We have our general expression for stress. The stress vector is equal to the D matrix, the B matrix, and the T matrix multiplied by the degree of freedom vector for this element. So again, the degree of freedom vector for the element just takes the solved degrees of freedom from the global system equation and extracts only those that are relevant to this element. The T matrix is the transformation matrix for this element that's going to convert the global degrees of freedom into the local coordinate system. The B matrix is our strain nodal displacement matrix. That's the relationship between strains and um, the local degrees of freedom. And then lastly, the D matrix is the material properties matrix. In the case of a beam, that is simply the Young's modulus E. Now remember this strain or this stress vector is going to simplify to sigma x because only axial stresses are predicted for our strains. And that's going to be in the local coordinate system. Stresses are always reported or developed initially in the local coordinate system. So our expression then expands out to what's shown here where the D has been replaced with E and I've put in the terms for the B matrix and again previously I showed you that because we know each of those shape functions we can evaluate all of the derivatives and we can get the B matrix written in terms of the length and X and Y positions. We'll show an example in the next video where we apply all of these techniques onto a beam system.